Hormesis autophagy, which increases your risk of cancer. Autophagy is when your body cleans up the dead cancer cells. And it also stops mitochondrial biogenesis. One of the, we, I forgot to talk about the mitochondria because this whole system works. And what, what you learn by reading Tripping Over the Truth is that cancer is not a genetic disease. It is not a genetic disease. It is a mitochondrial metabolic disease that has secondary genetic defects. And virtually no oncologist in this country understands that. It's a tragedy. You, your friends, your family do not have to die prematurely because they don't understand this. You can easily get the information yourself and apply it. And this is not something you do instead of conventional therapy. You do it with it, hopefully with someone who understands it, and they can reduce the side effects of the, any agents you're going to use and radically improve the effectiveness. But anyway, these mitochondria, you have like a quadrillion. That's a big number, isn't it? That's more than a trillion. How many, quad, how many trillion are in a quadrillion? Come on. Four? A thousand. You were correct, sir. It's the next step up because billion is two, trillion is three, tr quadrillion is four. So it's four. It's a thousand. It's the next order of magnitude. There's a quadrillion mitochondria. You create your weight. They make ATP. Uh, they're also important for signaling molecules. And you make your body weight in ATP every day. So if you weigh 150 pounds, you're making 150 pounds of ATP, which is the energy currency of your body, adenosine triphosphate. And that's produced in the mitochondria. So if you activate mTOR, you're going to increase your aging. So if you have high protein, you're going to accelerate aging. Reduce your protein, you're going to extend life. It is probably more important to monitor and supervise and control carefully your protein intake than it is your sugar intake. So, how much protein should you have? About one gram per kilogram of lean body mass. So if you weigh 200 pounds, say, it would be unusual for a person to be less than 10% body fat. Maybe it's your 20% was pretty, pretty typical. So if you weigh 200 pounds, that means you'd have and you're 20% body fat, you'd have 160 pounds of lean body mass. So for most people, that's going to be around, oh, actually, 40 to 70 grams. Now, if, is anyone metrically impaired? Do you want the imperial version? You really do want the imperial version, right? All right, it's, it's a half a gram. It's still... Because you don't measure protein in ounces. Now, when I say protein, you know, 30 to 40, gra 40 to 70 grams of protein, that's not 40 to 70 grams of chicken, okay? Because two to three ounces of chicken might have 20 grams of protein or 15 grams. You, know, you have to weigh it out and measure it. So, which brings me to the next slide, which is chronometer. Because to implement this program, you really have to accurately measure the food you're eating. And there's a lot of nutrient trackers out there like MyFitnessPal, which is unfortunately, it's a disaster program because they allow everyone to enter their data and share with everyone else. And it's never vetted. And the, the data is bad. And no data is better than bad data. So you get confused. It'll mix you up. So chronometer is the best. It's the one we worked with. It's accurate. And uh, it takes a little time to put in there, but you use a kitchen electronic digital scale. You measure your food, and you, and you figure this thing out. It's not something you do the rest of your life. Remember, this is just an initial phase so that you can know the food you're eating to actually kick your body into burning fat as your primary fuel. It's free, too. That's always good, isn't it? Free. And you got to use something like this. You can use chronometer.com and slash Mercola. And that's the one that's specifically oriented towards ketogenic diet. They're still free. I mean, there's versions that you could pay for, but you don't have to. 
Now, here's an important point, something we call feast and famine cycling. Because I did this program for a while. Actually, I'm just realizing that uh, I thought I only had 45 minutes today, so I took a lot of slides out. So before, would you like to know how you're burning fat for fuel? Who would like to know that? Okay, that's a good question, isn't it? This is one that almost everyone raised their hand. All right, well, it's very simple. Your body makes ketones. So you have to measure your ketones. There's three way to ways to measure ketones. One is in your urine, and that can be accurate initially, but then it stops being accurate, and it's kind of useless. The most accurate is a blood measurement, and there is a uh, AccuCheck. I think, uh, no, it begins with the, I forget that one, but it's a blood one, and, and it costs like $4 for each strip. So every time you measure it, it's $4, which is kind of pricey. You could make an investment in something, a, a, a breath, and that's measured in the blood. You, you can measure breath acetone by an instrument called ketonics. And there, there's no blood stick. You just blow into it, and then you find out what your ketones are. And that's, that's what I think is the most practical way to do it. Um, so then it, once you're burning fat for fuel and the, your ketones are elevated, then you know that you now have the metabolic flexibility to either burn sugar or burn fat, which, which is what you want to do. And once you reach that, this is when you go into the feast, famine, cycling. Now, we still want to keep the, the, the general recommendations I had before with respect to the amount of sugar and protein. But two days a week, you go into feast, you go into feast mode. So you can have like a lot of carbohydrates, like 100, 150 grams of carbohydrates. Like this. And you, typically you do this on the days that you're strength training and exercising because that gives your body an anabolic stimulus to increase the production of muscle. That's what you'll need. You need a little extra protein, you need a little, little extra carbohydrates. So two days a week, you're feasting, and the rest, maybe one day a week, you're fasting, and the other days you're doing the intermittent fasting, which we'll talk about in a bit. We're doing Facebook Live, so there's a much longer transition between slides than I'm used to. So, question for you guys. Uh, before I ask this question, though, so normally you're going to have 8 to 10% of your calories as protein, 8 to 10%, and maybe 10, 12% carbohydrates. So, you know, somewhere in that range, maybe 15%. So what does that leave? The only thing that's left, right? Fat. So if 60, a minimum of 60 to 85% of your diet is fat, if you get this wrong, you are MOS, M-U-O-S, messed up on steroids. Because fat is the key. If you have the wrong fat in your body, it's not going to work. And this is actually a pro was a major problem. Many people in this country eat the wrong fat. What is the wrong fat? It's vegetable oils, processed, industrialized vegetable oils, which do not function well in your body. And they're even worse when you heat them up. They, you, then they turn into plastic. And you may not realize, but... Every cell in your body has a cell membrane. That membrane is composed of? What is the membrane composed of? Fat. And each of those pieces of fat, they have two little long fatty acids, which is an insulator, and the binder is a, is a conductor, so that forms a capacitor. And they also can store body voltage and electrons. And when you're putting in plastic as a fat, that doesn't work. And you get sick and you die prematurely. That's like guaranteed. So, the question that was up there, so you gotta get the fat right. It's, and I'll talk about some of the fats you can get. This is a big audience. Many of people are here are interested in health, so my guess is someone here, someone here has flax oil at home. If you're that someone, raise your hand. Okay, great. I am so glad you came because I want you to write this down now that everyone who raised their hand is you, it, 
I mean, maybe close your eyes, just listen to my voice. You think of someone you know, a relative, a neighbor that you really don't like, and you give them that flaxseed oil. Do you want to know why? Because it's not good for you. Flaxseed oil is not good for you. It is an omega-3 essential fat that you think your body needs, and it does. But when you extract it and process, it's a processed oil. You do not want to consume processed oils. Those omega-3 bonds are highly perishable and susceptible to oxidative damage and sunlight. And it goes rancid really rapidly. Even if it's in the refrigerator, it goes rancid. So it might be good the first tablespoon or two, but believe me, it is bad. Throw it away. Does anyone not believe me? Is anyone afraid to say they don't believe me? <laughs> it's the truth. It is the truth. Now, I didn't say don't eat flax seeds, did I? Did I say that? No. I have flax seeds every day, usually about a tablespoon. You don't need a lot more, and I put it soak it overnight, and then I put it in my smoothie. It's a good thing. So that is key. So here's some vegetable oils. And if we could leave this slide up, Chris, until I uh, finish the, the bottom, just it'll be a little easier for me to, because that transition is a lot longer than I thought it was going to be. So the first one is avocado. It's probably one of the single best fats you can have. I have like two or three a day. Unfortunately, I don't know you about in Florida, they're, they're generally inexpensive, but in New York, they're probably really pricey. So who would like to know a way to cut the cost of your avocados in half? In half! I'll bet that'll pay for your ticket to this event today. Okay, are you listening? All right. The key, your favorite grocery store, you wait, just wait until they go on sale. And then you buy 20, 30, 40, 50, 60. But they have to be one thing. What do they have to be? Ripened? Not ripened. Okay, I was gonna throw something at you. <laughs> no, they have to be hard like a rock. Yeah, like you throw it through a window and you can break it, right? So, and then you put them in the fridge and here's the key. Three days before you use them, you take them out and they'll be ripe in three days. And then they'll last about three weeks in the fridge, three to four weeks. And interestingly, too, they travel really well. They don't get, you know, with TSA stamps on your luggage, you know, they don't squash. So coconut oil is another good oil. And MCT oil. Now, MCT stand is short for medium chain triglycerides. It's extracted from either coconuts or palm oil. And it's much better because... It's great for a few reasons, especially you're in the transition phase because if you can only burn sugar and you can't access your fat stores and you're not eating a lot of sugar, glucose, guess what? You're gonna be tired until you make that transition, right? So that's where coconut oil or even better MCT oil comes into play because it's a very short chain. Your body doesn't need a lot to digest it and it's rapidly metabolized to energy so you can have energy. So there's two types of MCT oil, the typical one that has uh, two forms of fat, eight carbon fat and 10 carbon fat, and that's the inexpensive one. But there's, a, there's one called caprylic acid, which only has C8, which turns to ketones really quickly. That's the one I take every day, about a tablespoon. And we actually have it back there too. It's caprylic acid, so it's a type of MCT oil. So we have it in our booth back, back here. But the key thing here is with caprylic acid or MCT oil, you've got to be really careful. You can't use a lot of it. If you do, you know what happens? What happens? You get disaster pants, right? You do. You do not want disaster pants. So you've got to start slow with it. And raw cacao butter is another good one. A lot of people in the health field have heard of that before. It's, it's one of the fats that they make chocolate out of. 
And here's another good one, macadamia nuts, macadamia and pecans. Those are the two best nuts. Why? Because they're high in fat. Actually, it's fat very similar to olive oil. Low in protein, low in sugar. So macadamia nuts are good. Who, do, who, do, who likes macadamia nuts? All right. They're expensive though, right? All right. Now, how would you want, who wants to know what to say 40% on your macadamia nuts? 40%, maybe 35. Are you ready? Okay. They're $18 a pound, and I can tell you how to get them for $13 a pound, as much as you want. You have to buy it from nuts.com, and you have to buy 25 pounds. So find a friend, you know. I actually go through that in about six weeks. But it's really good. It's because if you use a lot of macadamia nuts, that's, I mean, it is an incredibly healthy food. Uh, seeds like black sesame, black cumin, and olive oil, which is a bit of a challenge because at least two-thirds of the olive oil in this country is junk. Should not be consumed. It be, should be given to the neighbor you're going to give your flaxseed oil to. Okay? That's the key. So animal fats, pastured animal fats, you're grass-fed, not CAFO, confined animal feeding operations. Butter is really good. But again, grass-fed, pastured, ideally organic, ideally raw. If you can't find that, Kerry Gold is a good one. It's from Ireland, and most of the, the cattle there are grass-fed, and then tallow and lard. Now, Chris will leave this one up for a bit, too. Um, this is the most important fat your body can have. It is the only fat, the only primary fat that we're aware of that when you eat, your body loves it so much that it does not burn it for fuel unless you're starving to death. You know, then it would burn it. You know, it has, your body has priorities, but normally you don't burn this. It's a significant portion of the matter in your brain. It's this, you got to get this fat right. This is an omega-3 fat. It's essential. Your body does not know how to make this. You have to get it from the food. And a lot of vegetarians, any, any, we have any vegans or vegetarians here? Okay, well, that's good. We don't have too many of those. No, no it's okay. The, it's, vegetarian is a healthy diet. Vegan is healthy too. You just have to be careful. And I want to explain one of the cautions. A lot of people think you can eat flax seeds or chia or hemp and convert the omega-3 fat in there, which is an 18-chain fat called ALA, to the 22 carbon fat called DHA. And yes, your body can make some, but it makes insignificant amounts. So you just can't convert it in a high enough amount that you need. So that's why you need to get it from seafood. Seafood. Best to get it from seafood. Now, you, if you, for some reason, you just can't have any seafood, then you would use a supplement. The two supplements are fish oil or krill oil. I like krill oil better, unless you're allergic to shrimp crustaceans, because it has a phospholipid, so it's absorbed more effectively, and you don't get the burp. So, but ideally, food, so sardines, and sardines are great, because you know when you, does anyone here travel? You know, do you ever go to a restaurant? You know, that's like one of the most restaurants, like the worst place you can possibly eat. You are sabotaging your health when you go to a restaurant. So I travel with sardines. You know, I'll give you a hint. If you travel and you have them on your carry-on, just take them out of your bag first because you're going to get stopped by TSA. They're, thinking, they're, going to, they're still going to wipe it down for bomb bombs, you know. But, but travel with the sardines. This way you go in almost any restaurant, you can order salad, and you've got the, the most important piece of it. You've got your fat, healthy fat, and you've got your protein, and you've got your DHA. And you don't have to get... Because the biggest problem in most restaurants are two things, the fat and the protein. They've got terrible protein choices. It's, it's CAFO meat, CAFO chicken, and farm-raised fish. You know, I was, I was lecturing with Dr. Klinghart last month, about four weeks ago in New Jersey, not right down the road here. The speakers went out to eat for dinner. And one of the guys said, I, I was looking at the menu, and it said, it said organic salmon. Or get, yeah, you get it. She's the only one that's laughing. I was, this is what I was saying. I said, I don't believe it. It's how? So I asked the waiter, I said, how could you have organic salmon? He says, I don't know. 
Let me go in and back and ask. So he goes back and asks. He says, it's farm raised. <laughs> the worst, yeah, poisonous. So you can, that's another thing. You cannot believe almost the vast majority of restaurants essentially lie and commit fraud on the restaurant. No one, no one is supervised. There's no regulatory agent that goes over it. They could say whatever they want and get away with it. You know, so you've got to take control of it. You are in charge. Don't rely on that knucklehead who's put, you know, lying on the menu and believe him. You know, oh, it's organic. Salmon's got to be good, you know? No. And, and you know, I love shrimp. It's, one of, it's, it's America's favorite seafood, shrimp. But you don't want to buy it. You know why? Because almost all of it is harvested in Indonesia under slave labor conditions, and they're feeding them worse than CAFO food. So unless you know exactly where that shrimp came from, do not get it. You've got to be careful. Devil's in the details. Now, this is another detail. I know you guys would like it, so what you see here is a picture of me in high school. <laughs> yes. No. This is me. This is, this is actually when I had hair. But... Let me just check the time again to make sure I, I got, I cannot believe I have over an hour. I said, oh, we are doing good on time. So you guys have been sitting down for 38 minutes. Some of you longer got here early, but some of you were close to an hour sitting down. So one of the important things, you got to take care of your mitochondria or you will be screwed. I guarantee you 100%. You want to make sure they're healthy, they're thriving. Remember, mitochondrial dysfunction is what causes cancer, heart disease, diabetes, and Alzheimer's and other neurodegenerative diseases. So one of the ways that you can prevent that de gradual progressive destruction is to exercise. Exercise does something called BDNF, brain-derived neurotropic factor, which is fertilizer for your brain. It also increases something, a metabolic pathway called PGC1-alpha, which probably no one is here has heard of before, but is the single most potent stimulus to increase mitochondrial biogenesis or massively multiply your mitochondria. So after telling you that, I am going to give you all, all the opportunity to maximize these benefits. So everyone stand up. And I am not just going to teach you just standing up. That's what I used to do. I've got a good friend. His name is Dr. Zach Bush. What you see here, we're going to do some intermittent, like peak intensity exercise. Get yourself a little room. Get just make sure you got enough room to spread out a little bit. Now, you don't want to be like those, that guy that, can we, can we go back to the slide again, Chris? So who wants to be like the guy on your left? Or you want to be like the guy on the right? Yes, because don't make the mistake I did for 40 years doing long-term distance running. Now, you could do that, but you have to be comprehensive. And that's like the guy that's the marathoner. Or do you want to be a sprinter? So we're going to do a little sprint now. We're going to do something that was taught to me by Zach Bush. I'm going to let you warm up just by standing up for a minute, okay? But just got to get some room because this is... Um, Something that is heat determined to call it the nitric oxide dump. You've all heard of nitric oxide, right? It's pretty close to nitrous oxide, laughing gas. Well, you can, that's, nitric oxide does a lot of good things. It like prevents stroke. It decreases platelet aggregation. It makes your blood less sticky, it thinner. So you don't get a, a clot and a stroke or a heart attack. And in addition to that, you also get, it increased, improves your immune system. And it does a lot of, it's a really important metabolic signaling. So we're going to do this. I'm going to, there's going to be, you can drop out. If, if, now, don't feel embarrassed. If you have an injury or something, you can sit down because I don't want to, you know, you're, you know, you're crippled or whatever. You know, but, but if you aren't, then you should be embarrassed because you need to, need to do this stuff. This is something you can do every day. It's something I do three times a day. Don't do it any more than, wait at least two hours. So ideally three times evenly spread throughout the day. You're gonna do a squat, a deep squat. You're gonna do, we're gonna do 10 of those. I'm gonna show you the exercises first. Then we're gonna do an arm raise. Notice it's to 90 degrees. It's not up here, it's to 90 degrees. Then you're gonna do like a, I don't know, how am I gonna do this with a microphone? Well, I'll figure it out. 
No, I need, I need to talk, so that's the problem. So then we're going to do a jumping jack without a jumping jack, just the arms, and then we're going to do a shoulder press. Sounds easy, right? You're going to do 10 of those, and then we're going to repeat it four, three times, four, four, so a total of four sets, 160 movements. And the key here is you will be out of breath. Don't breathe through your mouth. Breathe through your nose, okay? Now, this is the begin. I'm teaching you the beginner's version. Like this morning, I did it with 10-pound weights, which seems, oh, it's only 10-pound weights, but boy, it took me like four or five months to work up the 10-pound weights. And then you can also do, instead of a, a squat, you can also do a, uh, a jump. It's not going to work too well. I don't want to go through this. But you could do jumps and, you know, instead of that. So we're, but this, we'll do this simple basic one first. So is everyone ready? All right. Let's go to those mitochondria. Okay, ready. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Eight, nine, ten, and then one, two, three, four, five. No, you do it with two hands. You know, I just got a microphone. Four, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Okay, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Okay, that was one set. Down again. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. 10, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 1, 2, breathe through your mouth, through your nose, through 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, okay, half done, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Two hands, sir. Nine, ten. One, one two, three. No, on the side. Not like this. And the side. Four, five, six, seven, good. Nine, ten. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. One set left. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Ten. Okay, one, two, three, two hands, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. All right, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Okay, put your arms out. Put your, put your arm. Do you? Does anyone feel tingling in their hands? That is nitric oxide dumping. You have no idea. Now, that is a lot more powerful than just standing up, isn't it? Do you feel like you got a workout? I'm telling you, in three minutes, you, that's a high-intensity exercise. You're, is anyone breathing fast? That will get your heart moving. That's what your body needs. You do that, that's equal to like going to the, most people go to the gym for an hour, right? Three minutes, you just got the same metabolic benefits they did in an hour. You do it three times a day. Isn't that great? Dr. Zach Bush, one of my good friends. I love this man. He's the smartest doctor I ever met. I was just at his place last week in Vermont. Uh, that was it. That's him, Dr. Zach Bush. Okay. Sitting is the new smoking. You know, this is pretty interesting. I've did a lot of interviews. Dr. Joan Vernikos, who is the medical director for the astronauts and, and responsible for their health, came up with this conclusion. And then there's also Dr. James Levine out of Mayo Clinic. But the, the, the studies are pretty clear. For every minute you sit, it's worse than smoking a minute. That's why I don't sit down much anymore. I mean, I had to, to sit flying up here. You know, they kind of forced me. They wouldn't let me stand up that much. But... It's, I got a standing desk combo. I used to, I would, when I was seeing patients, I would move a lot more, but when I switched over to the internet 10 years ago, full time, I was sitting 16 hours a day and I had crippling, debilitating back pain. I could not stand up here as long as I had been all right without being in agony. And I saw lots of chiropractors, physical therapists, personal trainers, yoga, whole thing. It didn't, never got fixed until I stopped sitting down. 
huge, huge thing. And then while you're at it, you may as well figure out how many steps you're going to take. Because it's not just about exercise. Yes, what we just did was great. Doing it three times a day, even better. But if you're sitting down all day, it's not going to compensate for it. You need to move. 7,000 steps is a B-A-M. That's a bare-ass minimum. All right? 15,000 would be better. Now, there's another variable called iron. And there are many in this room who don't need to take iron. I mean, who don't... Actually, there are many, many in this room who, need, who may need to take iron. What's the difference? Women who still have their period, in other words, a premenopausal woman who's losing blood every month, could be iron deficient. Children under the, under the age of 15 or so could be iron deficient. But almost everyone else sitting here has too much iron. Iron is a very important oxidative stress. It steals electrons and energy from your body, causing free radical formation and destruction of mitochondrial DNA and cell membranes and proteins. So you want to limit that. Would you like to know how to limit that? You got to measure it. And what do you measure? Who knows? You measure your blood, but what in the blood? There's like 15 million things you can measure in the blood. What? Ferritin. Yes, it is ferritin. Interestingly, your ferritin levels should be equal to your same unit of measurement as vitamin D, 40 to 60 nanograms per milliliter. I will guarantee you the average ferritin level in this room is well over 100. Pro and there are many people sitting here. I, I mean, I guarantee, I, I'll give you a million and one odds that are going to die prematurely because they have too high iron. My dad had it. I diagnosed it when he was a young man, probably even younger than I am now. And he's still living. Not well, though. And it pains me. It saddens me to tears that both my dad is 89. My mom is 83, 82, actually. And they're both in wheelchairs. And they walk like this because they didn't move. They didn't move. You can prevent that. There's other things like Qigong too. Simple, crazy little things. We're just standing like this and just maybe bouncing up like this and shaking. So you get your balance. So if you do those things, then you don't have to be crippled and confined to a wheelchair. All right. So I'm sorry. A little bit of a tangent. So, um, but it really gets me. I'm going to see my, my parents tomorrow because they go to Chicago from here. And, uh, you know, it just, it just breaks me up when I see them. You know, I, I, and it's a powerful motivation catalyst for me. I never want to wind up like that. I never want to wind up like that. So if your iron level is high, you don't take a supplement for it. You just get it removed. You, you can donate your blood, but half the people can't donate their blood for a variety of reasons. So you have to get a prescription from your doctor. It's called a therapeutic phlebotomy. Ideally, you know a phlebotomist, and there's a number of them around, and they could just take maybe two ounces out of your blood at a time every week, two few weeks, instead of 16, which is what they take out at a blood donation. But people who donate their blood, they have half the rate of cancer and half the rate of heart disease, two to three times a year. So you can do a no, ben, benevolent, noble gesture and get the benefits from it, or just get, dump it. But you don't want too low iron, you don't want too high. Okay. So other important factors. Remember, it's all about improving your mitochondrial function. This is something I never really fully appreciated. It isn't really, doesn't dive deeply into my book, but will, it's going to be the topic of my next book. I don't know what it's going to be. I just figured I'm writing this book last week. But non-native, what does that mean? That means artificial. Normally when I'm lecturing, I'm wearing blue blockers. I'll tell you about that in a minute. But I'm not now because the light in here is pretty healthy. But there's, there's actually four types of non-native EMF. The first is magnetic, 
you can measure that with a tri-field meter. Most people are familiar with that. And then electric. This would be dirty electricity or EMI, electromagnetic interference. And then we have microwave radiation. And that's not your microwave oven because most people here are smart enough not to use a microwave oven, right? This is cell phone radiation. This is cell phone towers. This is your Wi-Fi router. Does anyone remember when they used to take x-rays of children's feet when they went to get shoes in the shoe store? Does anyone remember that? Okay, you can see a lot of people. This was because they were ignorant of the danger of ionizing radiation. And if anyone were to do that today, they'd go to jail, right? Because we know ionizing radiation is damaging. This is my cell phone. It is not ionizing radiation, but it's probably just as damn dangerous. And in the not too distant future, we're going to have a similar situation we had to those x-raying those feet in the shoe store, okay? This is on a selfie stick. Notice this? I do not hold my cell phone. I, I, was, I, didn't, I didn't want to ensure the time, but I've got meters that you can actually measure the power coming out of this thing. And it is literally 40 times higher uh, when, you're, as, when you're next to the phone and touching it as the one's down here. 40 times of that energy. You know what that energy does? It poisons your mitochondria. Poisons your mitochondria and causes mitochondrial dysfunction. And you know, we, the, the WHO, actually, I think I've got a slide in here on this too, said that it caused, in, six years ago, they classified it as a 2B carcinogen. But I think that's counterproductive to tell people, oh, it's going to cause brain cancer. Does it cause brain cancer? Absolutely. But who here knows someone with brain cancer from cell phone? Probably no one. Does anyone know that brain cancer from cell phone here? One person. Two? Three. Okay, so three. Okay, your brother died from it. So three people out of, that's, that's way less than 1%. So the average person, this is not going to be motivating for them. But how many people are obese? How many people are dying from cancer? How many people have heart disease? That's what it's causing. Some experts, and I'm connecting with some of the top people in the world now, believe this may be even more important than getting your food right. In fact, I've gone overboard. I'm off the deep end now. I sleep in a Faraday cage at night. You know, And I'll tell you, you don't have to do that, but what you have to do is you have to turn off your wireless router at night. Okay, this person had a phone go off. And it, was say, it was near her groin, too. I don't know why you would do that. Why would she be at You should put, who has their phone that's not in airplane mode? I mean, you don't, you don't put that damn phone in airplane mode. And it's in your pocket. You are, you are just causing damage unnecessarily. Unless you're, you know, you've got someone who's deathly ill in a hospital or something, then you shouldn't even be here. But your phone should be in airplane mode almost all the time. Unless you have to use it. I, I, didn't, I don't even have my phone in airplane mode. I put it in a Faraday bag so nothing gets through. You know, this stuff is real. I believe it. All right, we're going through. Class 2A carcinogen. I got it mixed up with glyphosate. This is a Faraday bag, and it's, caught, it's, it's available on... A vi it's very hard to find. Very hard to find, but I'll tell you the details, okay? It's called Mission Darkness. It's a military, the bag. But it, you want to know where to get it? It's a hard place to find, so you've got to... Pass, it's called... Really hard, but it's Amazon. Okay. So glyphosate is another terrible one, right? Class 2B carcinogen just two years ago. Class 2B carcinogen, which means probable cancer. 
This is, I like to put this up here. I mean, I, we know we shouldn't be eating glyphosate contaminated food. Unfortunately, they spray 5 billion with a B pounds on the planet every year. So guess what? It evaporates, it goes into the, into the air, and it rains glyphosate. So even if you're growing organic crops, you're getting glyphosate contaminated, unless you're growing them in a greenhouse. So, but the key thing there is that there's a massive collusion, and if you read my newsletter, you know this, revolving door between federal regulatory agencies and these companies. So, you, you know, they control it. You know, they're, they're, it's just for corporate greed. So you want to eat clean. That's another thing. And glyphosate, glyphosate is a mitochondrial poison. It's another one. Here's one that is not. It's sunshine. That is a native EMF. That means it's a natural EMF. Not all EMF is good. I mean, bad. You think EMF, you think bad, right? But sunlight is EMF. It's an electromagnetic frequency. You need it. We all need it. That's why I live in Florida and I'm outside one and a half to two hours virtually every day. Does it look like I'm outside? You've got to be out there getting that sun. So the thing is, if you're not, especially for people of color, deep color, you know, it's even worse. You need two to three times exposure as I do because you're, you've got more of a filter to block it out. And you say, oh, I can't do that. Well, then you have to swallow vitamin D, but I can tell you it is nowhere near as effective as sunlight. And I'll tell you why in a moment. Because vitamin D is a biological marker for ultraviolet B radiation exposure, which has some very important metabolic benefits. And when you fake out your body by swallowing a pill and not giving it the UVB that it needs, it needs it. I mean, UVB structures your water. Guess what else UVB exposure does? It stimulates something that we just did a few minutes ago. You know what that is? Nitric oxide. Probably one of the most potent ways. That's, you know where I do my nitric oxide dump? On the beach. And I get the sun, and I get the, so you get the double whammy. But when that happens, when you get nitric oxide released by exposing your skin, your, your skin, not your clothes, to the sun. Sorry, but I'm not used to this. I, I, don't, I don't think I've used a handheld mic in years. But when you have the ultraviolet B dilating your blood, because that's one of the things that nitric oxide does, right? Then you get maybe 60, 70 percent of your body's blood circulation going through the skin. Guess what? You're exposing it to the radiation. You're getting ultraviolet B, plus you're getting red and near infrared, which also structures the water in your body. And if you have the right and proper fats, specifically DHA, and the natural fats, not the plastic garbage, industrialized, processed fats, then your body can store that energy as voltage in your body. And that's where, the, that's where you need that energy. You need that energy to repair and heal your body. And if it's not there and you, can't, you lose that capacity, and you're not charging up, it's not going to work well. So with that primer, I gave this slide up at Dr. Klinghart's. And there was like hmm, 70 people in the audience. And someone got it right. I wonder if anyone's going to answer this question correct. Now, this is obviously subjective, but this is my impression. What's the biggest health mistake of the 20th century? Well, it's sitting too much, good, 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 well, but that's not it. Sunscreen, you're really close. That's close enough. That's good. You guys are smart. Avoiding the sun. Does anyone know a dermatologist who tells you to go into the sun? The Surgeon General, who got fired yesterday. Some people think it was my girlfriend that was responsible for that. <laughs> uh, he was fired, and he was a big, no, actually, he wasn't, the, it was the Surgeon General before him who was a dermatologist. Murthy was not, is not a dermatologist, but there was a big push on that. So the other thing is avoiding the sun is people, you know, I walk on the beach every day, I've told you that, right? 90% of the people are doing it wrong. And I'll, I'll show you a picture and I'll let you guess what the things are, okay? But one of them is sunglasses. There is like no reason for you to be wearing sunglasses. Except, 
doesn't cause cataracts. Oh, wait, oh, I got the slides out of order. When you're, sl I'll go to this and we'll go to that. I'll finish that thought. You should be sleeping in complete darkness at night. Complete, absolute darkness. If you can see your hand this close, it's too bright. Okay, it really needs to be that dark. And if it's not, you're going to have melatonin disruption. Melatonin is a very important hormone. It's really potent anti-cancer. And you have to have bright daylight exposure outside. All right. So this is me yesterday. My head is tilted because the sun was coming from over that way. So what are the things that I'm doing in this thing that make health sense? There's a lot of them. Let's go Skin is exposed, right? So a lot of people I see on the beach, they're walking and they got a full set of clothes on. Okay, now you can't see one thing, but what I'm not wearing here is shoes. All right, so we're, yes, we're grounding in the water. Sun exposure. Go ahead. I'm shading my face. Very good. Very, very good. Very perceptive because... The skin on your face is a relatively small surface area. You're not going to get significant vitamin D from exposing your, your face to the sun like what most people do. You know, they go outside with full clothes and think they're going to get enough vitamin D. Wrong. No, it's not going to work. Plus, you're going to damage your skin because the skin is very thin on your face and susceptible to photooxidation. So cover your skin and your face. If you even want to wear a safe sunscreen, I don't, I'm not opposed to that because it's not that that's the issue. So I'm covering, my, my, my face is in complete shade, right? And I'm walking in the water because it's more electromagnetically neutral, or, or um, it's more susceptible, not susceptible, more prone to providing a surplus of electrons into your body. And I'm walking, and I'm reading on my Kindle. So you can find all those things, because all of us are busy. A lot of us don't have the time to do this. You have to combine as many things as you can. You have to do beneficial multitasking, because multitasking can kill you, right? If you're, if you're uh, texting while you're driving, not a good idea, unless you have an autonomous car. So this is where I was going. So sunglasses are terrible, except, except when you're in bad light or the sun has set. Humans have been around many generations, thousands, some believe tens of thousands, some believe millions. A long time, whatever perspective you take. The only light source we've ever been exposed to prior to 1900 was fire. Fire. Now you say, what about the moon? What about the stars? Well, what is that? That is fire too, right? It's the only light we had. Now we have these. I guess these are healthy lights. I'm assuming they're halogen, but if they were fluorescent, they're clearly not LEDs, then we have enough beneficial light to balance it out. Because when you have bad light, uh, oh, I have a, oh, I have a pointer. This is so good. So this is daylight. This is what you see through the windows. Look at, this is the full spectrum. I actually have a, normally I travel with a spectrophotometer and I take a picture of it and I throw it up as a slide. But this is daylight. This is very, very healthy. This is an incandescent bulb. Notice how it's really low in blue, very low blue, which is, this is why it's so good at night. Fire is even worse than this. Not worse, it's actually better. It has less blue. This is a fluorescent. Look how terrible that graph looks. You know, it's not, does that look healthy? No. That's what many of us are exposed to at home or work. This is halogen, which is not quite as good as the incandescent because it's a little more blue and green, but it's still healthy light. It's an analog, it's, it's a analog light source, like fire. Uh, this is a cool white LED, which looks analog, but it really isn't. It's got this big spike, buried bad light, fluorescent and LEDs. You should not use those. So if I'm in an environment where there's, uh, actually, just go to the next slide too and show it again. Oops, sorry. This would be the incandescencies, and the other ones have these peaks, peaks, and you're not getting all the other ones. It's important to know that when you're exposed to blue light or ultraviolet, which is pretty close to that, 
it, it creates reactive oxygen species. It causes damage. But remember, reactive oxygen species can be healthy and beneficial, and you need some. The problem is when you only get the blue light and you don't get the red and the near infrared and the mid and the far infrared, that's the reparative. That's the restorative frequencies that cause your body to heal. So when you got them together, they work great. But when you only give one, you cause damage. And it's this exposure to this artificial light that is caused, and another form of artificial light are your cell phones, which are probably not as bad as your desktop monitors. And what's the biggest monitor in your house? The TV. I guarantee you, there's probably a few people who don't have it, but almost all of them are LEDs with the same darn frequencies that I showed you. So when you're exposing your retina to that unfiltered, excessive blue light without the red and the near infrared, you are increasing your risk for macular degeneration and biological dysfunction. So we are going to have an epidemic of macular degeneration. Or what is the other term for that? Blindness. The most common cause of blindness in the US. Fortunately, it's reversible if you know what you're doing. And one of them is not exposure, your, your, your retina to those frequencies. So when the sun goes down, I've already went to that very hard to find site called Amazon. And I purchased, these are laser goggles. And what color are they? Red. These are not blue blockers. These are red. And I look really cool now. But when the sun goes down, these goes on. These go on. You don't need to wear them in the daytime. Because if, if, if this was unhealthy, light is still circadian rhythm-wise is okay. So I would just wear the blue blockers. But after sunset, I wear the red. These are very expensive. They're $9. I think they're called red light laser protector safety glasses. I have an answer. Let me just check the time. Make sure I don't go crazy overboard. Okay, getting close. We're getting close to the end. Uh, so use incandescent bulbs. This is another thing you can get on Amazon. You just use those search names and you find it. This is a 850 nanometer, almost 200 LED bulbs that you can use to give yourself these healing frequencies. This is near infrared light, incredibly healing. They've been used, I've interviewed Dr. Hamblin, who's a professor at Harvard in photobiomodulation, and they, he's actually found they've been able to turn people's kidney disease around, that we're gonna get a transplant, and they put them on this and they don't need a transplant. Alzheimer's, lots of studies on reversing Alzheimer's with this. So you can also use it for infrared, because one of the other mitochondrial poisons are heavy metals, but unless you get address the electromagnetic interference, it's really difficult to detox, but one of the best detoxes you can use is a low EMF infrared tent sauna. Tent meaning your head's not in there. And the other cool thing, you can't see it here, but there's two little, this is, you usually have to be in here like a half hour. There's two little zippers here. They can open up and you can type on your computer. <laughs> so you can be multitask. I'm sorry? The, the other one, the previous one, this one? Yeah, security illuminator. So you can use this light with this device. You could like shine this around and do that. And there's some other detox strategies you need, but that would take like an hour that I don't have. But, there's a, but this is a powerful strategy. And they just did a finished study. They, inter, they did this uh, epidemiological analysis and they found that the Finnish men who were swimming, and I think it was women too, who were doing sauna every day. That's a traditional sauna, not this one, which is better. They had, they, had 60% less heart disease and, and brain disease. It was just crazy. It's a good thing. So grounding is another good thing. Ideally best to ground with the sun shining on your skin because you create a biological circuit. Oh, here's another cool thing. This is, I, this, I created this bar. It took me, we had like 17 versions of this bar. So, you know, when you're normally, I should have put this earlier. I got, I got to put it at the end. But when you're normally snacking, you know, one of the things, well, what am I going to snack? Well, this bar is like, we, this is the best tasting bar. It's the, the Mito Mix bar. It's only been out a few weeks. But I have like a number of these every day. It tastes so good. Not the regular chocolate one, but the double chocolate right there. It's like, oh, my God. It's orgasmic. It has like a very little uh, protein, lots of good healthy fat, really healthy fat, and like 17 grams of fiber and very low carbs. 
Okay. Oh, it's got sugar. It has five grams of net carbs. I didn't discuss a net carb. A net carb is total carbs minus fiber. So it has five grams. You can get the ones without the chocolate covering. It's only 2.5 grams. But if you're burning fat for fuel, it's okay to have some carbohydrates. You need some. I, would, I typically have 50, 60 grams a day, so I'm getting two and a half or five from that. That's not a problem. And most of it are from vegetables. So this is the other thing, you gotta drink clear water. Fluoride is a, what's called a dielectric blocker. Not only will it kick out iodine out of your thyroid, which is a big problem for women and a major cause of hypothyroidism, but it will also, is a mother mitochondrial poison. Do not drink fluoridated water. Do not drink fluoridated water. Now, Ronnie Brower, is he present today? I was told he would be here. Is Ronnie here? Is this, I don't see him. Is anyone, is anyone claiming to be Ronnie Brower here? You know him? Okay, so I'm not telling a lie because these women in the front row are affirming this. So anyway, he, he was supposed to be here, but I guess he no-showed. So anyway, he, he lost, he was before 675 pounds. That's just one of his trainers. And he lost, he went down, he lost like 455, 475 pounds. Crazy with his trainer. So, following these principles. Didn't do it overnight, but he did it. I would like to have him come up and say a few words. That was the plan, but obviously he can't do that. Uh, Nick Murphy was his personal trainer. And that's the, uh, he even did a TED talk on, if you want more information about it, called Fighting Fat with Fat. You need fat, you need healthy fat. Don't get deluded. Okay, these are the questions that Karen referenced earlier that we took so I could answer. What is the best way to use MC2 if you tend to be a very lean person? What are the benefits of using it for athletes for those trying to get in shape? Well, the best way is to use the caprylic acid. That, this is that we have the ketone energy, we call it. Uh, and you can use it for athletes. So, so is, is a ketogenic diet healthy for an athlete? I think it is. You want to have the metabolic flexibility to burn fat but you know, if you're a burst athlete, like a wrestler or a boxer or a sprinter, then it's not as critical. It is if you're an endurance athlete because your body burns primarily fat in those endurance events. So you want to do that for sure. And then the ketone energy, especially if you're engaged in one of those activities can be really useful. Carolyn's mom, what are the five most important things you can do to care for your aging parents? Does anyone here have an aging parent? A lot of us do. So this, Carolyn's mom, I guess Carolyn's grandparents are in their late 80s, just like my parents, and beginning to show signs of weight loss, reduced mobility, assuming they have a fairly good diet, what supplements should be taken, what lab tests should be done. So as I said before, the key thing is to movement. You've got to move. The moment you start sitting down is the moment your life energy is leaving your body and you're, you're accelerating your exit from the planet. You've got to move. You gotta eat the right foods, of course. Now remember, you can't out-exercise your mouth. So you can be exercising like a fanatic, like I'm doing four or five hours a day, or, and, and then eat poorly and think that's gonna be enough to compensate, but it's not. You have to eat healthy. Eating healthy is more important than the exercise, but if you want to not have that loss of mobility when you're age, you gotta move. So I think I had another. How would you prioritize, this is Joy. Is Joy here? Okay, Joy, stand up. That is Joy who asked this question. This, we didn't make this up. All right, you can, you can sit down. Is Carolyn here? I should have asked if Carolyn was in the audience. Are you Carolyn? Okay, stand up, Carolyn. Is your mom next to you? Okay, so that's Carolyn. So she did ask the, the question. It wasn't a fake question, okay? Like, so Joy just asked, and she just stood up, how would you prioritize the lifestyle, diet, supplement, and other changes in an effort to improve overall wellness? I thought this was a really good question because it sort of serves as a summary. So I'm going to answer it here. The program. <laughs> I wrote this on the plane. Optimized light and EMF, native and non-native. You've got to get the light equation right. Photobiology is crucial, is probably on par with the food you eat. And in fact, some research scientists believe you get more energy from your light exposure than you get from the food you eat. 
And I can guarantee, yeah, that's only if it's working the right way, if you're eating the right fats. Otherwise, you're not going to be able to transduce this energy from your optimal light exposure. You were designed to be in the sun. If you're not in the sun, you are, you are going downhill. And I know that's not the nature of most Americans. We're not in the sun every day. But you just have to figure it out. And if you have a full-time job, it's hard. You know, it's hard to get out there. Uh, movement, I mentioned this Qigong exercise, which is really use, useful. Uh, Carolyn, uh, no, is it Carolyn? I think it is. Anyway, so you just do this. I just learned this last week where you just kind of shake in and let your arm go. And there's a lot of ways, but it's just moving and getting your whole system going. And, and it, not that it's necessarily good, necessary for if you're young and healthy, but when you're 70, 80 years old, this could be the difference between being confined to a wheelchair and dying 10 years earlier and moving around, being in the garden and just enjoying life. It's a big thing. It's a, it's an, it's a huge issue. And here's the other thing. Eat real food. Eat real food. Ninety-five percent of the calories that Americans eat are processed foods. How could you be healthy with processed foods? You want to eat real foods. Now, that is a profoundly accurate statement, but remember, the devil is in the details, right? Not only the type of food, but the timing. That's why I wrote Fat for Fuel, to give you the details. Now, a lot of it's on my site, but the benefit of a book is that it's all consolidated in one place, and it's easy to follow. And you know, I read 150, 200 books a year. I think it's one of the best investments you can possibly make because you have no idea, unless you've written a book, how much effort and energy goes into compiling that as a resource. It takes thousands and thousands of hours and for like a measly 15 bucks, you can get all this information in one place. It's crazy. I mean, what a value. I just bought four books last night. So this is a good value. This, this will be the number one health book of 2017. There's no, just, I mean, we've already pre-sold 100,000 copies. So it's going to be big. And especially, I'm, I'm hoping it gets to the point where Atkins did. I mean, Atkins did a really good job. One of the things some people might say, because I know we have a person here at work for Atkins, is what's the primary difference between this and Atkins? Would you like to know? What's the difference? The difference is we pay attention to the quality of food. Atkins didn't. Even when he was still alive, he was using Splenda in his products. But even more important, he did not, and I can't, it's hard to criticize him for this because the knowledge was really new. It was, a, it was available, but you'd have to be a deep molecular biologist to understand it. He didn't know a damn thing about mTOR and protein. So it was high protein, high fat, low carbs. You cannot have high protein. That is worse than high carbs. It will decimate you. Now, if you're, doesn't, now that, that chronic high protein. So if you're a weight trainer and you want to have pulsed it a few times a week, that's okay. But if you have high protein all the time, you are asking for trouble. Just asking for trouble. So I think that's, I'm, I'm going to be, make sure I'm leaving on time. Maybe I could ask, a, let me just check. Yeah, I just like perfect timing. So uh, my plane is in airplane mode too, as I encourage you to be. So be cautious, you know, this EMF is a real deal. Pay very strict attention. I'm actually going to go shoot a video tomorrow or Tuesday in Chicago to tell you more details about the cell phone and how to take care of it, but it's, it's a real issue. So thank you for your attention and all your support. I appreciate it.